Steve Gilmore. This is the Gilmore Gang for Friday in uh, September. Uh, Kevin Marks, please uh, call your mother. Uh, welcome to Robert Scoble. Hey, what's up? Does this new Skype work better now? I, I can't tell the difference, but it's working. So It's working. That's it wasn't working news. 10 minutes ago. Right. Uh, also uh, joining us is uh, Keith Tier. Welcome, Keith. Thank you. Nice to be here. And uh, from his fortress of pontification. <laughs> <laughs> so appropriate. We, we've just been on a, a, another show that um, precedes this one uh, with uh, Vala Afshar and Michael Craigsman. It was uh, we had a lot of fun, uh, and John talked more than he has in the entire time he's ever been on the Gilmore Gang. So we're looking forward to you extending that. Uh, welcome, John Toshak. Thanks, Steve. <laughs> okay, and did I say, uh, Kevin Marks, where are you? Okay. So, uh, what's happening, Robert? Uh, we're all getting used to our new iPhones, which uh, are fun. I was at Motorola today and uh, was working with their engineers on a GPS problem on my Moto X. That's why I have this Moto Rolla badge on. Um, and I uh, shipped a book. Congratulations. And, uh, Blackberry lost a billion dollars. And what else? I don't know. A bunch, a bunch of apps shipped this week because everybody and their brother shipped the iOS 7 update. <laughs> so, uh, t first of all, tell us, about, <coughs> tell us about the book. What, uh, what's, well, uh, it, it's about five forces that I started noticing because the Gilmore gang, uh, uh, almost two years ago, um, socials going up, location data is going up, databases are changing radically. Uh, you know, MongoDB didn't exist six years ago, and now it's running a lot of the world's startups. Uh, and add on to that sensors and wearable computing. Um, and you, if you join those things together, the thesis of the book is um, for people, we're going to get highly personalized products. So I was on the phone this morning with Oakley, and they're talking about some new stuff coming soon. But the stuff that they're building, the sunglasses they're building, are highly personalized. When you put on my glasses, you'll see my information, not yours. Um, and it also means that uh, we're going to get assistive product. And we all know this uh, from watching Google Now. And then for businesses, uh, we'll talk more at, uh, I think, the Dreamforce event, right? Is it, what, what about the Dreamforce event? That's coming up, uh, what, in a month or a few weeks? When is that Dreamforce event? November 18th. Event? See, you guys know the yeah, dates. My, my calendar is my But you just mentioned is... it. Why did you mention it? Well, because we're speaking there uh, with, uh, I, I don't know if Benioff's going to be on stage with us or not, but uh, we're uh, speaking in one of the keynotes about this. And for businesses, we, we are already seeing that uh, for businesses, it means that you're going to have perfect information. Uh, every, you're going to know everything about everything in your business. I mean, I think about Uber or any of the competitors. Uh, they know every transaction, every customer, where they are, uh, why the customer showed up, uh, all sorts of stuff. And what is this uh, reference to uh, Mark Benioff and you as an Uber driver? What does that mean? Oh, because I was driving around our chairman yesterday, <laughs> and I was joking around that I'm uh, the world's most expensive Lyft driver, <laughs> which is a competitor to Uber. And, and uh, Benny Affa uh, commented, oh, I, uh, I thought, always thought you would be a great Uber driver. <laughs> yeah, I'd be a little expensive. <laughs> it's a little trick I learned from Esther Dyson, that if you want to get somebody's time and you can never get them on their calendar and you can never get your calendar synced up with theirs, Offer to pick him up at the airport, and <laughs> oftentimes that'll work. It's funny because I once drove Esther from Palo Alto to the airport for that very reason. Yep, and uh, it works, right? It does People work. Yeah. Places, and I ended up I ended up at a party at Karen Swisher's house actually halfway there. See that, and that's how you get invited to parties. You, you know, you're the Uber driver for the rich and famous, and all of a sudden you're going to parties with the rich and famous. It's like, <laughs> there you go. Um, anyways, and it, for the second thing, it means for businesses is they're going to know their customer in very deep detail, and I think that's what we're going to dig in at Dreamforce, because obviously Salesforce is uh, the leading uh, customer relationship management system. 
So. I like anyway, the up of the pitch. Um, uh, you know, talking to uh, the guys who are building um, wearables here, not not Google, but uh, the startup uh, that I met yesterday. Uh, he says a trend to watch is the size of sensors and processing is coming down at a far rate faster rate than he predicted when he started his company <coughs> two years ago. Uh, Oakley said the same thing. They're putting more and more compute into a little tiny computer inside their ski goggles. Uh, uh, an amazing amount of compute which is going to let you do all sorts of fun video editing things in the glass itself and we're getting a taste of this with the, the new iPhone right uh, the uh, you know Tim Cook made a big deal of um, 64 bit and doubled the speed of the last year's model and better graphics processing um, and uh, and these are trends that are happening because 900 million people are buying smartphones this year uh, you know, when you talk to Broadcom, which makes the little radios inside the uh, smartphones, they're saying that their R and D is being driven by this uh, industry that's pouring so much money into it. I agree. I, I was so, listening to you guys talk. Continue, please. Yeah. So I, I you know. Um, I don't know what it means all for Gilmore gang types. I mean, I, I look at tech meme right now, and Nike Nike's top fuel band designer is probably going to Apple, or is going to Apple, it says. Um, uh, Google Glass update is coming out. You know, uh, Google Glass competitor, which is uh, uh, Recon Instruments, which makes the compute package inside the Oakley uh, ski goggles. Uh, has already shipped 50,000 units and is uh, take t just got some more investment and is working with Apple. Um, you you know next year is going to be really interesting because it's it's clear Google Glass is going to come out probably mm, at Mobile World <coughs> in February. I would assume Apple is going to announce the iWatch right on top of that to try to suck off uh, uh, Google's uh, PR oxygen. Um, and Nike is still rumored to be announcing some new stuff uh, with the fuel band and the and the uh, shirt and the and the shoes that they're going to come out with. So it's going to be really interesting to see what um, what happens next year in, in terms of wearables. Did you see not, uh, Apple just hired Ben Schaffer, who is the guy that um, designed yeah, the, that's what I was talking the field about. band? It's, yeah, that's what I was talking about. It's on the top of Tech Meme right now. Um, you know, yeah. the, the fuel band isn't all that interesting. It, it has one sensor in it, and it looks okay, you know. Um, I think the but, fuel band has three sensors in it. Uh, does it now? It, it's it, not yeah. the most accurate thing you've ever seen. So uh, Yeah, none of them are. But if you have to wear it on your wrist, none of them are. I've got one. I mean, if you look at, uh, let's see, right here, this is a fuel band. You can see that there's one, two, and three sensors. Plus, it has the little LED display, you know. It's uh, it's bigger than a Fitbit, but it's it. it I think it's uh, I think it's fun. <laughs> well, you know, why would a guy like that go to Apple other than he got probably got a big raise? <laughs> um, because in in this new iPhone is a new uh, six axis or nine axis uh, accelerometer that's watching our every movement all day long, whether you think it's on or not, because uh, there's a new separate from the processor system that watches that sensor. Um, this is going to be the hub of a whole bunch of wearables around you. And, you know, it's funny, I, I had a, uh, breakfast with Dave Weiner a, a couple of days ago, and he didn't even know what low energy Bluetooth was. And that shows you that, that really smart people in the industry uh, haven't even started getting on board with what, uh, with what is going to come, come out in the next year. Um, yeah, it's a new world. It is. It's gonna. It's gonna be uh, somewhat transformational, I think. And uh, you know, why? Why would uh, Apple hire? I mean, isn't he, isn't Tim Cook well, related to Nike somehow too? Uh, yeah, he's in, on the board. He's on the board. Yeah. Uh, you know, Francine asked, "What? What if the uh, phone isn't on me? Well, you're gonna be wearing something while you're running or skiing or surfing or, you know, or uh, biking or at the gym. You're gonna be wearing something, and most of the time, you're gonna have your phone on you." So, you know, I carry the phone everywhere. I don't leave it. Unless I'm in the water, I don't leave it anywhere. 
Yeah, um, but you don't need to have it. I mean, you, if you're swimming or something like that, you don't need to have it on. It's the uh, the low energy Bluetooth allows you to sync it up as soon as you get near it again, and it's, then it's always syncing. It becomes much uh, more of a you know the dashboard into your your fitness in this in this yeah. case. Uh, and in fact, Oakley team said that the new Bluetooth stuff makes it e much easier to sync uh, devices. You know, it, uh, it automatically resyncs when you get closer to a device, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Um, did any of you try? Did any of you try the Apple TV implementation of iBeacon yet, where you can tap the Apple TV with your phone and it, it passes all the credentials from your phone to the Apple TV, so you don't have to type it all in? No, I haven't yet. And uh, let me turn on my TV and we'll. I have it. thrown my phone at my TV at times. <laughs> <laughs> no, and I, you know, How did I you went find to, out uh, about this? BetaWorks uh, uh, last week. And uh, it was it was talked about earlier in the week, a couple of days ago. Somebody discovered it by accident, and it's built into the. If you upgrade your Apple TV to version six, uh, there's a Bluetooth setting. There's a whole bunch of new stuff actually on Apple TV. They they just launched Major League Soccer. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, that's that's uh, actually a reason to get it. I'm serious. Yeah. yeah. Well, let me uh, let me update my uh, Apple TV upstairs. I haven't done that yet. Okay. So, but but if you update the software, it activates the Bluetooth signal. Yeah. yeah. But basically, they built iBeacon software into the upgrade. So, and the phone already has iBeacon software in with iOS seven, and so they basically they discover each other, and you can pass the credentials from one to the other. And uh, they tell you to tap to tap the Apple TV, but that's just a trick. It's not really necessary to tap it. You just have to be close, <laughs> close to it. Yeah, it's like, to sell that's you like when phone. a magician <laughs> says, you know, tap the deck, like, you know, yeah. and it will magically fly into it. What is that? That's my uh, iPhone 5S calling me. I'll, if it's yeah. Kevin, tell him to call in. <laughs> All right. So, uh, Robert, what have you... Uh, you you mentioned uh, iOS seven problems. Uh, do you want to? No, no, I've I've had uh, not too many problems. I've had a, a, a certainly my apps are crashing at a higher rate, but not not at a high enough rate for me to really to complain about it. I'm going back and forth between the Moto X and the uh, iPhone. Uh, Google Glass works better off of um, uh, off of uh, Moto X, so I, I'm still stuck because of the ecosystem. And I, I think that's really going to be uh, the argument. I, you know, I, I don't know. Francine's like, oh, I have to buy an I iPhone 5S now. I just wait a month. There's going to be another sensor on the next uh, Nexus 7. I, or the next Nexus is coming out. I, it's gonna, it's gonna be a thing that's gonna happen all year next year. That there's gonna be uh, um, this uh, leap, leapfrogging effect. There's too much innovation going on in this uh, mobile world. So let me see if I can update my. Well, Apple while you're TV. doing that, let's watch Kevin Marks uh, wake up. <laughs> oh. Hi there. Hi. Well, <laughs> where were you? Hi, Kevin Marks. I was, I was coming to this this um, C2SV conference that. Robert's at too somewhere allegedly. Um, oh, I was there yesterday. Aha! Uh -huh. yeah. But they've hidden it in the basement of the convention center. So I've I've been going around the convention center for the past half an hour, going, "Where the hell's the conference?" And <laughs> I, found, I found a police award ceremony. That was that was the the closest I found. What convention center? <laughs> the the San, San Jose McKinnery Convention Center. Oh, I see. The yeah. So the conference downtown. was actually yesterday, and you're there today. No, the conference no, is it's, here. It's, oh, just, it's, it's, it's Steve Wozniak like, speaking today. Yeah, he's he's on stage at the moment. So. Yeah, and uh, uh, tomorrow is uh, uh, John Maca McAfee. Yeah, tomorrow is uh, we all want to go partying with John McAfee and see if it, if his uh, hype is as big as his uh, nose. It's insidious. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. You, you're, it's a good thing, Steve, you don't know what we're talking about because you've already lived through the 60s. You don't need to go there again. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but since I did live through them, I don't remember anything. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Icky Pop is coming tonight, apparently. So. Really? Anyways, uh, somebody uh, to go back into the chat rooms. Uh, and Kush was asking, "What's the difference between glass and uh, the recon instruments?" You know, um, oh man, <laughs> glass is a general-purpose wearable computer that you're going to wear all day long, no matter you know, in a wide variety of things. Uh, recon is making uh, heads-up displays and compute patches for sports. 
So if you're skiing, you're going to be uh, wearing an Oakley ski goggle with a Recon Instruments uh, compute package and screen in, in your uh, face. And they have a jet um, sunglass that has a wearable computer as well for mountain biking or for skiing when you don't need a, a full-on goggle. Um, but they're highly optimized for sporting. They're not general walk around every day, go shopping, uh, talk to Francine, make phone calls kind of devices. Um, and that's where the separation is. And so people say, oh, this is a Google Glass competitor, just really have not worn a Google Glass or a Jet and really don't understand that, there's, that they're very, very different uh, devices. Um, you know, yeah, recon is going to be for fire. There's going to be a whole bunch of uh, vertical markets. By the way, I was talking. Who's the other one who's making a two-screen uh, device? Ha! Ah, I can't even remember all these uh, companies anymore. Oh. That looked like that enough. was Spock, right there. That was the mind melt. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So do, does recon do um, actual overlays on your vision? Is it, is, is it one of those, or is that a different one? No, it's still a it's still a screen that's. Still screen the corner. Okay. So you look, you're, you know, because while you're skiing, you don't want to be seeing sh stuff pop up in front of you. Uh, so well, you potentially want a heads-up display. You know, you want to see. Yeah, go that you way. really don't. Uh, when you're skiing, you want to be in the moment and enjoying your skiing. And, well, but you want an assistant there, at least not for a while. Until you want a terrain to... map and alerts about trees coming up to you. Yeah, you don't well, want Sony Barnett yeah, wouldn't use that. You but... know. Uh, we're not to that point yet. I, you know, maybe in ten years, yes. But the screens just aren't there. The battery life isn't there. The uh, the human interface, the human machine interfaces aren't there. Action while you're in a high impact ex experience like skiing or driving, uh, you just don't want that kind of uh, 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 information. Yeah. Too much information, yeah. Uh, but so it's kind of like uh, like uh, the way people use a GoPro. Like uh, you have to be actively in, in engaged with that product in order to do that kind of event, like a skiing event, um, right. where you strap on a GoPro and you're like, "Hey, I'm going to do this now," as as opposed to being part of your life. So it's not really a wearable computer. It's something that you potentially could wear. I to think augment. this is all the stuff that that we think is going to happen that never does happen. No, it, it's happening, and I'm trying to find the damn company I was talking to yesterday. <laughs> too many. <laughs> too many. We had a, like a Google, portable computer that we could find out stuff with. It would be it'd be fantastic. What's that? Yeah. Go so ahead. You put your gloss on. You Resume your search. <laughs> you got about. Yeah, I'm, I'm already on Google. I'm I'm not having success finding this uh, new startup. Uh, it's a startup that most people haven't heard of yet. So. Including Google, it seems. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Our producer informs us that Google has changed something. Oh, it's yeah. algorithms. Well, they changed it a month ago and nobody noticed, and they announced it yesterday, and everyone was like, wait, what? All right, so what did they change? Uh, they changed the guts of it. I believe Danny to explain exactly what they changed. But basically, they've, they're using more of the. Um, the knowledge graph stuff. They're taking advantage of that so they're, and they're doing more deeper parsing of what you say to, to try and give you more coherent responses, which they've been doing for, they've been doing for a while, but, they, they, but they, they, they talked about how they had to change some infrastructure to do that. And the knowledge and, and graph stuff, is that like the Google Plus uh, ontology? It's more like the Wikipedia ontology with some additions. So they, they, they acquired that company, uh, the one that had the structured data of how yes. everything relates to everything. Yes, and I'm trying to remember the name too. Um, yes. Uh, ah. Anyway, broadly, it's 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 a big chunk of Wikipedia, then augmented by them crawling other bits and pieces. It was something like OpenBase or FreeBase or FreeBase. 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 Seriously, they call the a product FreeBase? Yeah. Yep. Why don't they call it Richard Pryor or something? I mean, come on. Why don't, it just doesn't sound right. <laughs> there you go, FreeBase. It's a structured data set derived initially from Wikipedia, then augmented with all kinds of other databases. And it's basically faceted search where you know, <laughs> you know what relates to what. Yeah, but rather than actually having to express the facets, they guess the facet for you. So you search for an actor's name and they go, that actor was in this show and this show and this show. And here's some other actors and give you a little thing down the side that's a bit more coherent than um, a list of links. So that, that's, the, that's the 
incorporating that more in the mainstream search was was what this change was about. The other big change they made was now nobody gets referrers. All referrers have been um, hidden because they've got an HTTPS for everything, which means that um, if you're running a website, you no longer know how the, how the, what they were searching for when they came to you. Which will make um, Danny's next conference very interesting. Yeah. By the way, it was Meta that I was thinking of, and they have a two-screen wearable uh, with a, a new UI that's all augmented reality. And they admit they're, you're Do not. Do they show different things in the two wear... screens? What's what? that? They show different things in the two screens, or uh, it's how... a 3D interface because they put a U UI over the world, so it needs to interact okay. with the world and overlay uh, a. a, a overlay stuff on the world. It's not just UI, it's uh, uh, you know, I saw a Google Glass app that, I, that, we, that won our contest where aliens start just popping down from the ceiling and you start shooting them by looking at them. Um, and that's the kind of thing that you can do when you have a, a sensor platform that knows where you're aimed, where your eyes are looking, and uh, has, has screens in front of you. I'd like an enterprise version of that software. Oh, uh, it's coming. There's a lot, <laughs> there's a lot coming. This, this is the Apple II. This is like we're in 1977, and the Apple II is coming out in a month, and we got an early look at it. That, that, that's how early it is. We haven't even yet started dreaming about what VisiCalc's going to be or uh, you know, what the um, Macintosh or what the IBM PC is going to look like. I, I mean, all that stuff is in the future, and we know stuff is coming. We just don't know what it looks like or how it's going to get productized. Oh, when it's going to come, even. Yeah. Now, what the, what the meta guy says is uh, uh, this stuff is happening at a far greater rate than they expected. Uh, the sensors, he said, are coming down in size so fast that it's ahead of where they were planning when they wrote their business models and, and got their investment. Um, and so they said look for in the next 12 months some really mind-blowing stuff coming out of the wearables and, uh, in, and not just glasses. He said, you know, he totally believes that there's going to be sensors in clothes, sensors in shoes, sensors in on your wrist, all sorts of new kinds of things, and it, it's going to be really interesting to see what happens. I, you know, he says uh, there's a lot of sensors coming out that are uh, secret that nobody uh, talks about. In fact, even in the Google Glass, there's an eye sensor, and Google refuses, even to this day, to tell us what that sensor does. And they don't have any software that runs on that sensor. They haven't turned on any APIs. You know, so we have to wait for everybody to, you know, ship stuff. Coming next year, <laughs> <laughs> but but also the other part is actually reinterpreting the data you're getting from the sensors that you already have, and that's that's the other thing we're seeing a lot of. So that's the um, suddenly we're getting iterations of the um, cell phone APIs that that give you little callbacks to say the user is driving, the user is walking, the user is sitting still, um, and you can hook those and do things with that. Yeah. Um. Yeah, Murray says all cameras will soon be 3D depth cameras. I'm not so sure about that. Uh, there's a lot of life left in 2D sensors. Um, but uh, there are a lot of 3D sensors coming that will study you. I mean, uh, uh, Xbox Connect is shipping, uh, what, in November? And that, that has uh, a new sensor that's so sensitive that it can see uh, your heart rate from across the room. So... <laughs> You know, how are, how are developers going to use just that sensor? Uh, that's going to be interesting. You know, you're going to get some uh, badges just by making your heart race a little bit. So the phone, in a way, is becoming the aggregator of sensors. So you, you can imagine a, te a temperature sensor and a pulse sensor and yep. maybe a sugar in the blood sensor. And the phone is where all that information gets aggregated and pushed to the cloud to notify a doctor just before you die. Well, I, you, you think we're joking about this. This is coming true very fast. No, uh, I'm not joking. I, was, I, was, I wasn't joking. I, I, I talked with one guy who's developing a, a saliva sensor that can tell you're having a heart attack 24 hours before you're going to have a heart attack. And, so, and he says he can build that for pennies in quantity. So maybe it'll start out with, at $30, but $30 to save your life, not bad. Um, you know, and if it gets down to the pennies level, I said, "Oh, you mean uh, uh, iPhone uh, 12? We're going to be licking it, you know, <laughs> the lickable iPhone." <laughs> okay. Okay, I, you know, put a little LSD on the phone. You know, it'd be like Steve Jobs and their sensors all together. 
Where so uh, I already have this little device from it. It's called uh, Telesert or something, where you can uh, prick your finger and you put blood on this little barcode strip thing, and you put that into the phone and it tells you your blood sugar level, and it's just a little bit of blood. So I don't see any reason why that wouldn't be done with the iPhone. Yeah. Right. So instead of your fingerprint, it actually pricks your finger when you touch it. It does, and then you get blood, and then it measures the sugar in the blood. And then you could DNA sequence it and tell you tell you whether it's you or not as well. This is where they're going to go with the thumb print. <laughs> it's going to it's going to actually take a piece of your thumb <laughs> and analyze yeah. it. Oh yeah, that's him, or it used to be him. Okay, well <laughs> this has been really really oh, interesting. Oh, you're a twin brother. <laughs> <laughs> But what has this got to do with uh, iOS 7? That's what I want to know. iOS 7? I, you know, <laughs> iOS 7 is just going to be the hub underneath all our personal clouds. And so is Android. Well, the most amazing thing about iOS 7 is that already 75% of all qualified devices have updated to it, which is yeah. Uh, stunning. Yeah, the, the automatic update is also fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. However... Reminds I me can't talk a... about it, but I'm still waiting. I still have my iPhone 5. Basically, I have to carry both devices. Because uh, 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 your VPN isn't updated yet? Oh, I didn't say that. Yeah, I, I did, because I, I hit the same problem, because we use the same VPN at Rackspace. <laughs> right, so uh, I, I, I do way, hear that... There time is. to update, guys. Time to update. Seven point oh two has just been released. Yeah, that doesn't. Yeah, already it. updated. <laughs> no, it's about the sixty-four bit uh, OS. Uh, uh, is what this is about, and uh, Cisco. But I hear rumors that Apple has figured out a workaround. Um, so that's my life. Well, you know we're we're. Where this is really going, and uh, I in New York, I met with Dave Matthews, who's the CEO of a company called New Air, and it's A E R. Um, and he pulled out his iPhone and he showed me all of the Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, and other wireless stuff around us. And he started s talking through some of the things that he's going to be able to do because he knows where you are based on all that stuff, and it's going to get better and better resolution as we get low energy Bluetooth. By the way, everybody who has an iPhone has a low energy Bluetooth radio and it's just a couple lines of code to turn that thing on and make it an identifying radio. So I could, you know, I could see a highlight of the future where I walk closer to to uh, you know, Steve and it says, "Hey, you're next to Steve Gilmore," you know. Um, but I still think that this is that you know, we're we're doing this kind of minority report thing where we think that the future as is designed by Stanley Kubrick is going to be what actually happens. And I don't think that any of this is going to happen. No, it's going to be a designed by Andy Grignan. <laughs> it's going to be I think that I think that things will be overwhelmed and Kevin by, Marks. And, and I think the it's the second and third generation uh, ideas that are going to overwhelm Yeah, because you can't design side. You know, until you have Google Glass on for a month or two, you don't really get what it does. And then until Google turns on the damn SDK, you really can't have fun, you know? The, yeah, you can, ha you can hack into Android. They call it sideloading the app down deep into the Android, and you can turn on the sensors. But that's no fun. You're not, you're not even sure your app's going to get uh, distributed by Google. You know, they might say, well, we didn't really want you to do that. And... We're not going to distribute your app, uh, so you have to sort. You're sort of everybody's in a holding pattern to wait for Google to turn on the SDKs and make the Glass Developer Kit robust. And right now, it's not. <laughs> it sucks. One of the nice things about Android is you you can get an app installed even if Google doesn't distribute it. Yeah, um, but that but that's yeah. harder, right? The, you know, you know, uh, if you get featured in the Apple App Store, you get uh, 10,000 downloads a day, maybe even more now, right? No, uh, we've been featured for the last week. Yeah. Trust, me, trust me, it's way, way lower than that now. Really? Way lower. Why? We've been, we've been featured uh, on iPad and on the iPhone uh, in the social networking category for both, and it's, uh, it's under 1,000 a day. 
you're only featured in the social networking. You're not featured on the homepage. No, but only three or four apps get that. Most apps get featured in their category. Yeah, there's 20 there right now on my page. In fact, there's a whole list of iOS 7 updated apps that they picked and are featuring. I think those things get the 10,000. But still, 1,000 a day ain't bad. Uh, right. Go get a great a tech crunch article and see how many you get downloads off of that. You'll get, you know, you might get a thousand to five thousand off of one article. Yeah. But that only lasts for one day. That's and, right. Uh, it goes away, right? If if you get featured over and over, it it brings a a good chunk of people to you. Funnily enough, Android featuring drives a lot more downloads. Really? Yeah. Well, that that sort of makes sense because the Android uh, marketplace is newer and has a lot more people on it, right? So. Um, I've been expecting that to hear that from an entrepreneur for a, quite a while. John Tashek, what do you think? Um, I'm just here to listen to more intelligent people. <laughs> <laughs> nice try. You John's know, doing a rerun from the uh, greatest hits of the previous show. <laughs> uh, so, uh, so that one of the big things that happened. No, I want to hear what Steve. John Tushek says about uh, about uh, apps and uh, downloads. Yeah, and, uh, and, and uh, Android. Uh, you know, all this smack that's being thrown around. Part. I think right people here. have blindness to apps in general on uh, on the what's featured, and if they have a need for it, they'll get it. And Apple, maybe Apple uh, users have are have their social issues solved right now, and Android people don't. So it's going to be a little mix of both. Um, that drives up uh, adoption or downloads. I think it's a pretty, a, a pretty um, interesting statistic if Android is driving more, but it's uh, only interesting. It doesn't actually mean anything yet. And uh, so, so some more depth on that analysis is, is necessary, like what kind of apps are downloaded. But no one's actually giving out that information. And so somebody should go out and find out from the uh, from the, the startups, like you know, what, how many downloads and you know when you released and what the what the thing is to quantify this stuff. Otherwise, I just you don't want to piss off Apple, right? Uh, Keith, did you sign any NDAs with Apple, or do you have a sensitivity of talking about the Apple ecosystem with the press and stuff like that? Uh, I don't think so. Uh, pro probably I did agree to some terms and conditions that I didn't even read, but they won't stop me saying what I think. Yeah. Okay. Um, and what would but, that but be? You, uh, you know, I've got probably uh, as much experience as anyone now because we're we've been in both app stores since July the 11th. Yeah. And, um, you know, we're a very specific app. We're we're targeting um, a very specific use case, which is uh, replacing people's messaging behavior with our app in order that they get the benefit of a cloud memory of everything they did, and. Um, I'm not sure that our numbers would be relevant to another app that did a different thing. Um, yeah. uh, but from my expert, we've got 100, 185,000 installs on iOS and about 40,000 on Android in, um, since July 11th. So iOS is, is much bigger for us and those users stay. Uh, the retention is very high. And the number of publishers on iOS is about 15% of the total publish. On Android, it's about 2%. Yeah. So they're very different, very, very different, uh, both in scale and in retention and in behavior. You really see this, you know, when, whenever I walk into a dev shop or, something, you know, like going to Betaworks, man, it's iPhones everywhere. It, it, and people uh, still don't understand that, but I, I was talking to one of the vice presidents at eBay yesterday, and he, he continued staying with the same thing, that they have more users on iPhone. And I'm like, really, even after all the sales of Android, he goes, yeah, you know, the usage is still different. And Tim, Tim Cook, in his interview with Business Week, made the same point. He said, I don't really care if I have market share. I care if I have user share, you know? Yeah, uh, so do you find it? Go ahead. Well, he, his point was that I want to make a device that gets used, and that's how I judge myself, uh, how I judge Apple against everybody else. Yeah, what are and the tr it, what are the transactions that flow through uh, what system? I mean, that really is the coin of the realm, isn't it? it, it 
you know, on the way home, I sat, I, I walked through first class. So I was sitting in the back, and I looked at every single, every single person had a, a phone out, by the way, and everyone sitting in first class had an iPhone. Every single one. There was not an Android in the uh, first class. Now that's not always true, but in this particular plane, it was all iPhone. And and people like me and Keith and and eBay pay attention to that. It's like, oh. All the rich people have iPhones. Why? Why is that? <laughs> and, I, and I think there's actually two Android audiences. One is demographic based on price, and the other is uh, uh, kind of uh, geeky uh, because yeah. of the openness of the platform. It's attractive to to uh, to, to people like us. Um, but I think the mass market um, higher end is all iPhone and pretty much globally even if you go to China it's the wealthier people getting iPhones and poorer people getting Android phones and the behaviors are, are different you know it's it's if, you know if you're a university educated graduate in a professional job your behavior is totally different than if you are a you know a single mom yeah Kevin your thoughts I think that's it. I think this is very easy to look at the you know look at the set of things that we have and and have a narrow minded view of that. That was that was one of the things I was ranting about about the distinction between um, phone and tablet that with that is is a function of Apple's product line more than it is um, a function of how these devices actually behave in the world. And having seen people using a lot of larger um, devices, um, particularly on public transport, um, that's a, that's another sort of thing that, that you that you don't see if you're in the, in the valley bubble where you go everywhere in, in um, Uber and um, company buses. What What is this valley bubble that you speak of? <laughs> Seriously. Yeah, it's not just the valley, man. I, there is no valley anymore. That, Alan, okay, yeah. Alan well, you guys live over the, the hill on the, on the shore, but, you know. I, 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 no, I, but I, I'm Robert's, making a, uh, Robert's making a real point here. I'm pushing it's back a, on the idea that there's some sort of uh, it's not a valley bubble, valley it's a bubble. tech enthusiast bubble. If you go uh, to an auto show, okay, everybody is talking about you know the, the latest Tesla or the latest Audi. They want to sit in that car. They don't want to sit in a Prius. Come on. I, so, I, uh, and I know this because I hang out with the auto press once in a while, and, and they hate the Prius, even though they know all of their customers are going to buy one because it has better gas mileage. You know? I, I think what he means is the echo chamber. Uh, yeah, it's not, it, and it's the not valley that, and it's not the valley. It's a, it's the tech enthusiast echo chamber or the rich person's echo chamber. Yeah, but you know, Great. rock and roll has been replaced by tech, and so you know that echo chamber is pretty big, pretty big deal. It, it yeah, runs it, everything basically. I, yeah. Believe me, I was in New York and I stood in a line that was a mile long, a mile long for iPhones, and it didn't stop. You saw it on the show last week. It didn't stop all day long people were coming in it is crazy what you know when, when we argue that apple's going away or that uh, you know it's just I, I you know sometimes i say this because i'm like i wish that there was more innovation but it just ain't it ain't rational <laughs> so so uh, in, in we've we've actually decided and we haven't ever told anyone on this but we're, we're we've gone back to developing for ios first uh, even though we're on both platforms um, we're still test. We're still iterating a lot. It's kind of lean startup. What feature works, what doesn't, and we were trying to do it across two platforms. And the Android stuff just doesn't, doesn't make sense for us anymore. So we're testing on iOS, and when something works, we put it into Android as well. So this is why I watch, because uh, Apple still is the one that controls the PR and the early adopter, who is the one that controls what everybody else thinks. It, it just is. You know, out in front of the New York store was five satellite trucks. I have never seen five satellite trucks at anything, including a Mark Zuckerberg keynote. You know, at TechCrunch Disrupt, there was one satellite truck. So um, the press is focused on Apple. Uh, uh, the, the rich people are focused on Apple. And most of the early adopters, now me and Kevin are uh, probably you know, in the 20% that aren't all that focused on Apple. But even me, I had to well, buy one. Tashek, you know? you're not focused on Apple, are you? Focused on Apple? Sure, I, I focus on Apple. And so you're rejecting my uh, thesis. I don't focus only on Apple. Okay. But, 
So. <laughs> right, but but let, let's talk about where. Hey, let, 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 wait, let's back up though. I mean, Thank every you. time something comes out that's interesting, we all like iron filings to a magnet, just <laughs> rock on to it and say, hey. You know, Apple came out with a 5S. Holy shit, there's a 5S. Now everyone's going to go to the 5S and they wait a mile, you know, long. Then Google comes out with something innovative and then like, oh, we all shift over. The truth is, you know, on the on a tablet device or the iOS device, it, it's just a better ecosystem for developers because they were first, it's better, it's more solid. The I, the uh, the iPad though, is a little, I mean, it has issues, but it's, you know, the, the, uh, the iOS 7, I mean, has issues on the iPad, but so what? You know, on the phone, it's just a better phone for a four inch factor. So it's just the best one out there right now. Some Gina people want other that, ones. The truth, Tina says that the truth is that, that really. What is, really who's making matter. that noise? I don't know. Kevin? Uh, but not me. Somebody's making noise. Mute when you're not talking. It not me. really solves a lot of the world's problems. Keith? <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I think maybe it was me. I, I did a. I was doing a box opening of an Intuit uh, pre pressure sensitive pen for an iPad. You know, just because you hold it down below the shot doesn't mean that we can't hear it. <laughs> I was I was forgetting about the A in AV. You look like you were in the back of the classroom with, you know, throwing spitballs. But go on. <laughs> so Robert, go ahead. Tina said it really doesn't matter is, is the truth. And no, no, you were like, saying I, something interesting. If you're in the Android ecosystem, you're not going to switch to the latest iPhone because you're just not going to – first of all, you're not going to switch phones – Normal people don't buy phones every three months like I do, right? I have a nice gadget budget, and I'm paid to keep up to date. And so I'm going to buy the next Nexus when it comes out in a month. And I'm going to buy the Google Glass when it comes out in February. And I'm going to buy the Apple Watch when it comes out in March. And I'm going to buy, you know, everybody, everything. Normal people wait the two years after their contract's done so they can get the two hundred dollar phone instead of paying six hundred. No, they don't. They, they yes, sold they do. nine I million phones on Saturday, for God's sake. Believe me, I I. Who are those people? Right? Early adopter, Valley no, Bubble. They're normal people who have a budget and they they can't upgrade. You know, spend four hundred dollars of their family's money. There's when nothing they don't to buy. I think Apple timed anymore. that one perfectly, though, with, with the the annual upgrade. I mean, they're yes. they're a smart company. Yes. Those yeah. when their customers are exactly. going to upgrade, and they know that every year a certain p percentage is going to upgrade, so they have a phone every every year. They're not you're not going to lose an Apple phone user to an Android, and and vice versa. Even if it even if Nexus next month comes out with something cool, these look the they're same. They're not going to switch. These look the same. This yeah. one is so much better. <laughs> That's too this smart. is so much better. Which one is that? It's the new one. The new one that deletes your contacts? Well, <laughs> Which the new that? one that you can't even get on the internet uh, with. <laughs> that's not the new one. That's the that's the iOS seven. Uh, well, you I know, tried to. Yeah, they're, they're, they're not related. related context too, yeah. Yeah. So let me tell you, the cool thing on the Apple ecosystem right now is not the speed. It's the fingerprint sensor, and, and everybody can. Yeah, but the speed's pretty good too. Yeah, pretty good. It it, it is. You know what? When you come back to Apple after spending six months uh -huh. on the uh, Android ecosystem, you realize just how snappier everything is. It, it, it just is smoother. And and I get where Tim Cook's going with that. He's like, I'm going to make everything smooth for you. It, it's going to be uh, beautiful and smooth. Now, you can say they should have given you some LSD to uh, handle the new color choices. Oh, we can take care of that. Out. We don't need Apple's help. <laughs> Yeah, but you know, I, I, it took me a week to get used to the color choices and customize it, so I, it didn't uh, look so garish. But um, what are you talking about? I hate the new iOS color choices. <laughs> I, the, the the way the icons look, I I really do. I like. I, ha the I hate how skinny the text is. Do you vomit? I installed, I installed the update and I can't read the text anymore because it's all like one pixel wide and it's grey on the retina screen. It's like. You've got you've got to go to the accessibility settings in general, yes. and you get to choose the, the I'm text old size. button, don't I? Yeah. Yeah. Tina, this is too you, dude, you need to bold. go get your eyes checked out and get new glasses. Tina texted me about <laughs> something about bold, but it was too small. I couldn't read it, so I. Don't no, look, it's yeah, look at this. <laughs> this, this, this is what you got to do. To be nice to. Keep, to Kevin. No, I don't really I, want know, to I used know, to, Keith. when people used to complain about small fonts in the Windows uh -huh. NT days, because I used to have really young eyes back then, 
and people would complain, my fonts are too small, and they would make their whole screen bigger and stuff like that. I would go, why are you doing that? That destroys the whole point of having more resolution. And uh, now I'm getting it, too. My, <laughs> my <laughs> eyes are getting old and creaky yeah. and uh, seeing these things. Yeah, Your arms is, are too short. This is where my... <laughs> yes. This is where yeah. my... When my oh, arms if I have contacts out. on, I can't even see my screens anymore. I don't even try to use my mobile phone. So, <laughs> well, that's yeah. why you have an iPhone and an iPad, isn't it? Because the iPhone is for the short-sighted people, and the and the iPad is you hold out like this, like the newspaper, and you read like that. By the way, it's funny. How do you Google mean short-sighted? With, by the way, with go the Google Glass with contacts, I can see more than eight inches. Uh, I, with, you're not, not implying that there's something better in the long run. What, uh, <laughs> what do you mean by short-sighted? No, I, f I find that I take my glasses off and then I can re use the, the very high res screen like that. And then I put them back on. It's like, oh, I've got to be over there. And, I think you know. short sighted is is British for myopic. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and what do you mean by myopic, by the way? <laughs> <laughs> Should I be taking that personally? That's for the. You know, you know if, you, if you the problem is as you get older you get you get myopia and presbyopia so you can't see stuff at either end so you're sitting there going I've got to put glasses on and then I've still got to hold it a yard away. It gets hot. Okay, and now you have to focus. explain what presbyopia means. What the hell is that? Myopia is nearsightedness. No, myopia, but presbyopia. Presbyopia oh, that's is when your muscle. eyes get changed, shams, like, like get more ovoid because and weird as you ovoid. age, which means your near point moves out. See, you have this tendency to add new words that require <laughs> explanation in your explanations of the previous words. So now well, I don't know what ovoid now, means. Now, come on, that's a common one. As you get older, your eye gets longer. Ovoid? Yeah. Ovo oh, yes, right, yeah. <laughs> ovoid, uh, yes. Yeah, more egg-like. <laughs> Less spherical. <laughs> Actually, that takes me back to acid. Oh, void. <laughs> <laughs> right. Relax your mind. It is not dying. Is this why the Apple's coming out with a curved screen? Oh, no. Who's coming out with a curved screen? What does that mean? Samsung. What, why do you need a curved screen on a phone? To fit uh, I think no it's idea. the ability to, to curve it that is important. To, to be different than the iPhone. Let's talk curve. If you can roll it up in your, in your pocket, maybe. But. No, there are parts of your body that are curved. I always get the feeling. So you don't pocket dial when it's in your pocket. I'm talking pocket. about too, too many parts, I think. <laughs> oh, so so it's it's when you when I put this in my in my trouser pocket, it, it actually is the shape of my leg. Is that the idea? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. You don't even go too there. Too much information. Please. Wait. I'm glad, I'm glad you said leg. <laughs> <laughs> that's not a that's not yes. a banana in my pocket. It's my new Samsung. <laughs> that's, that's, that was the new sense that Tina wanted. Yeah. I I have the strong <laughs> sense that the Samsung is actually not real. That it is an Apple subsidiary designed to uh, give us something to think about while they invent new stuff. <laughs> Well, it's interesting. Seriously. Did you see the CEO of Samsung yesterday went on the record about how uh, disappointed he is with the, Google, with the uh, Galaxy Gear, the, the watch? And he made the point that he thinks the device is fine, it's just the software and the user interface that suck. Which made me laugh that he thinks that's a small thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That, that explains exactly what's wrong with Samsung. Uh, and by the way, it ain't beautiful. And people who've seen the iPhone, iWatch coming out, say it's night and day. Uh, you know, and this is really what Apple gets. They just get beauty. And I, you know, something on my wrist, I want to be beautiful, not geeky like this uh, fatigue science sensor. You know, but it, but it's both. Uh, it's both, Robert. It's it's form and function. Uh, yeah. and, and the fit between them, and so a Apple would never build a beautiful thing that didn't have a great function. So you can bet your life they're going to give them a lot of thought to why would you want to wear this thing, and what benefits will you get from wearing it, and not just like the weather or the time, uh, which you know makes it useless uh, most of the time. But actual something interesting, probably related to push notifications. Probably related to conversations. Uh, I, I don't know what it'll be, but you can bet your life that we'll buy into the function and the form, not just one or the other. Yeah. Who's talking? I don't know. Uh, Kevin's uh, battery's dying. I, I think. Yes. Yeah. My um, apparently my screen was on when I was when it was in my bag. So I've only got three minutes left. Okay. So <laughs> I, should sum, uh, I should sum up fast. You can yeah. sum up, and then we'll talk for another half an hour. 
Go ahead, <laughs> Kevin. Sum up. Um, um so I, I missed the. You know, I was at XOXO last week, um, watching you guys, and get to, to, to put, put a word in. But it was. Um, I didn't end. I didn't end up being participating much in the um, iOS launch hype very much at all. Right? And when I got my um, uh, blah, blah, blah. My, I really got my. Wow, I forgot the name of the damn thing. Um, uh, Android. No, the other, the Apple thing, the big one, not a phone. iPad. 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 Shit, how can I forget iPad? That's scary. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I, well, I luckily, just, luckily, you saw it here first, people. You saw it here first. first. You don't worry. You won't be afraid for long. You'll forget that you were afraid. I've, I've, but go I've, ahead. Well, the thing is, I mean, the point I was making, I had actually almost forgot my iPad because I wasn't using it, and when I got it out, it said. You need to plug it in. It hasn't been backed up for, for three weeks. And I realized I hadn't actually used it in the three weeks that I've been traveling because I've been using this um, and because I've been using, using a phone. And that was, and it was like, oh, I really haven't used that at all. And that was, so that's why I didn't even get into the iOS 7 upgrade thing until like two days ago when I, when I actually plugged it in. And that was, uh, it made me realize that that form factor has actually gone completely from my, from my usage band. Right. Well, that's what happened with the mini and before at the first Nexus 7. Yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah, we call that the Matthew Brady effect. When you <laughs> when you uh, look at a, somebody taking a picture with an iPad, and it looks like you might as well have Matthew Brady <laughs> with a dynamite flash, you know, going off. <laughs> yeah, I walked into a Rincon Center, and there was a woman going like this. <laughs> she was making a movie, evidently. A selfie? Uh, <laughs> no. Yeah, we didn't even talk her. about the new it was Kindles. Everything else. Go ahead. What about them? You, you guys have heard of the Padcaster, right? You've got to see the Padcaster. Let me just let me just show you this. You All right, but, we, this. But, we, but you know we have to have Kevin's insight. Uh, so go ahead, <laughs> Robert. Kindles. Talk about the uh, the uh, new the new Kindle. Okay, nicer good. screen. Um, Padcaster, please. Do we, do we know what Android is based on? <laughs> uh, yeah, Amazon's version. <laughs> yeah, they, well, they called it. They've called it Fire OS three, but I couldn't see anything. In the said, oh, and this is actually Android 4.x. So, I don't, I don't have any need to I'm buy one because I already have an iPad and it plays my Kindle, my book on Kindle just fine. Yeah, no, this is this is <laughs> but, this is a great Kindle device too. I've been using this as a as a as a book reader on on that traveling. The one thing that uh, Amazon That's did announce one, that right? was that caught yeah. a lot of people's eye is this new yeah. customer service scheme where you can uh, click a button and then <laughs> be talking to a human being. Um, I think that's really brilliant. I think I might do that and ask them why I have to buy a new um, start a new account so I can move books between the UK and the US and, and see what their answer is. That that might be fun. And, and that, that, actually, that's that's why it's brilliant because they can hear directly from customers about how pissed off they are at various things and fix them. <laughs> and if right. you know, this is the basis of a new kind of customer service, and it's yeah. for AppSpace. You know, we've been the customer service leader for a long time, so th this is sort of a. What mm -hmm. I want them to do is to, uh, when I get my new Bob Dylan record, which I will never get, by the way, uh, that what they will do is that they will send out those little Kindles to record when the uh, express driver steals my my record, <laughs> and then. But by the way, you, you you suckered me into spending a hundred bucks on that Bob Dylan, and I got the digital version right away. My box still hasn't come either. That's right. No, they're on indefinite back order. <laughs> I'm serious. It's uh, I'm a really unhappy customer of Amazon. It's the first time I've tried to buy anything. On the other hand, you've had the record ever since the uh, the, the day that we talked about it. What yeah, I've, I've been listening to it. Yeah, it's fantastic. What? So you what? They didn't ship it to you? No. And no, they, in my case, they've never shipped it. It's they shipped it to me, and it was stolen oh. off our our doorstop. So say them, yeah. even though they said that uh, Kevin just went poof. Um, His battery died. It was stolen. It never arrived. And then they promised me that they would send another one, and now it's on indefinite back order. Oh, they can't because they can't make enough CDs. Right. Yeah, there's and this I never, huge and I never, I Apple never got iPhone like rush for the Bob Dylan backup tapes. Well, you have it online anyway, right? I do. Well, there's that. It is that. Yeah. Now, if they could just, it's it's confusing. I check the Wikipedia for the liner notes. No, they don't have it. They have this uh, 
semi liner notes. It you know that is what I do. The uh, uh, Robert, you were saying something about the uh, iPad. No, nah, I just said the iPad was good enough, and that's why I don't care about the Kindle. But uh, you know, my book looks great on an iPad on Kindle on the Kindle app on iPad. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, but I think it's interesting what they're uh, potentially doing with the. Uh, you know they're turning their store into the i you know they're putting all of the brick and mortar stuff into their kindle yeah and you know establishing a you know a 360 uh always on relationship with their customers yep it's brilliant what what they're doing um all the way around i mean i you know i signed an exclusive deal with amazon for the book um and that's how they're going to continue making sure that Barnes & Noble doesn't come in the market, you know? Okay, so... Uh, By the way, they print... So this is something that's changed radically in the book industry. This, the, the book industry. We should do a whole show in the book industry after this thing's over. But we finished this book, I don't know, three weeks ago, and now it's out. Uh, in, in the old world, if you deal with a regular book publisher, it can be up to nine months between the time you turn in your manuscript to when you see it in physical form. Uh, Amazon has shrunk that time to, you know, two, three weeks. And uh, that's huge for doing this kind of, uh, you know, topical book that's going to get obsolete over time. So um, we didn't talk about Steve Ballmer. Uh, goodbye, goodbye. Well, I'm surprised that I'll he, see you he, on your yacht. he was going to be there for another year. So I know. What's the deal? Uh, so I think the year was always BS. He, when he's out, he's out, and they're going to take up to a year to replace him. But if they find someone sooner, they'll do it quicker. Is more or less what they said. The other, there's two other things that happened this week that are interesting. One is Angel List launched syndicated. Um, I was going to say betting, uh, investing. Yeah, I guess it's the same thing. Syndicated investing uh, with. Uh, current interest for individuals who put consortiums together, which is going to be fairly important in that Angelus probably ends up replacing incubators as a source of financing for a lot of startups. And that will impact Y Combinator and Dave McClure and people like that. Uh, in my world, that's kind of an interesting development. And then the second is uh, something you guys probably talked about last week when I wasn't on, which is the Twitter IPO um, and whether it's a good idea for them to go in public right now. A good idea for the general public to uh, invest in it? Is that what you're saying? Oh, well, by the same definition, a good idea for Twitter to be doing it before they've really figured out their revenues, uh, which I assume they're still figuring out. Yeah. John, what do you think? I don't know. <laughs> do you think it's about a good idea? About the syndicated publishing or the, no, uh, the Twitter or uh, IPO? Or three, um, he said three things in a row. Past. I know. Well, so Balmer, yeah, I agree. We didn't talk about it. Um, the uh, <laughs> and that's the name of the show. We didn't talk about Balmer. Yeah, it's not. Yeah, what, what can you do? The guy cried. He's sad. Um, the uh, uh, Twitter IPO. I think they're they're really lear they've learned quite a bit from all the previous IPOs, and I think that it's going to be you know fascinating how they're generating publicity without you know breaking any of the uh, SEC guidelines or anything like that and doing it. Right. So uh, to uh, Keith's point or your question, uh, I th I think it's uh, interesting and probably the right thing to do to uh, have a rolling IPO. In other words, use the IPO to boost the potential for revenue, which will then uh, reinforce the uh, stock price. Instead of doing what uh, Facebook did, which was to hit a uh, hit a brick wall with the IPO and only now recover from it, uh, that they basically t Twitter can sort of do it as they go. Yeah, I think they, I think the good thing about um, got the echo again the the uh, they did it on the New York Stock Exchange, right? They're going to pick that. Is that certain now? Uh, it was up in the air. It was they were they were negotiating. Okay, so I, I think they're leaning toward New York Stock Exchange, right? And uh, I think that's a very you know when Facebook went out on Nasdaq, Mark said it was a, uh, Benioff said it was a mistake to do that. 
And I think um, that uh, the New York Stock Exchange lends a lot of credibility to a company like Twitter and raises its profile outside of just tech circles into, um, you know, into mainstream and media companies and, the, and mainstream companies in general. Keith? I'm, I'm more worried that their absolute revenues uh, are not big enough yet and the, the predictability quarter over quarter is probably still not there. It, and I say that as a user of the advertising service, I spend money with them and they're evolving pretty rapidly. Uh, they're pretty expensive still. They seriously underperform Facebook for a like uh, apples to apples kind of advertising experience. So it just doesn't feel good timing to me. I, I, I once filed a real name for an IPO in 1999 and I remember the advice from the bankers, uh, which was Michael Grimes from Morgan Stanley, was, you know, if you don't know you're going to make it the next six quarters and roughly how, you shouldn't be going public yet. Well, my, my feeling is, is that uh, Twitter is a lot like CNN and uh, uh, Fox and, and MSNBC in that they they look like they're way <clears throat> way underperforming except when something big happens in the news and then all of a sudden uh everything is worth 10x it's kind of like uber you know they wait until uh you know to the rush hour and then they jack prices up by like 70 percent uh, and i think that that's what will happen with twitter i think that the very fact of them uh going for an ipo will begin to generate, uh, you know, uh, a, a move toward them in terms of monetization. It'll be did newsworthy you, in and of itself. Did you notice they made this announcement? I think it was with ABC, right? It was with one of the TV networks. I think it was ABC that uh, they're kind of co-sponsoring um, this whole part of Twitter, which is integrating TV shows with, um, with Twitter. And that's very much this whole Peter Fenton driven belief that Twitter is the center of the universe for media conversation and viewing ultimately uh, uh, which of course is very different to being a, com a platform for communications and it, you Would know, somebody pick up the call please unfortunately it's me and I don't want to pick it up because I have to answer it I'm talking so I can't mute myself Let me but mute they myself really now. want to talk to you so why don't you mute yourself or I'll mute you you mute me because my Skype is frozen. Okay, there you go. Well, that was interesting. Yeah, it was. <laughs> I was looking at you. I was trying to figure out. No, I was looking to see if it was me. It wasn't me. <laughs> All right, Robert, summary. Uh, not again. <laughs> uh, summary. I'm waiting for the wearable revolution in the personal cloud. I think that's well. You where can't wait my... much longer now that the book's out. Yeah, it's coming fast. Okay. Uh, you know, have a signing party. I already sold out, man. November seventh. You guys sign my invited. Kindle. <laughs> sign your Kindle. Yeah, I, we can. We can give you paper. <laughs> cool. I'll sign the back of your Kindle if you want. <laughs> okay, but uh, what else? Uh. Bomber, you want to talk about it? No, I, I've said enough about him. He, you know, um, I I want to know what the future of Microsoft's going to look like if if they uh, can get a, a clue about where the future is. And I don't, you know, how, how do they steal some market share away from uh, these two ecosystems? They don't. I, I am right. So if I was at Microsoft, do they give up on uh, Windows Phone and go Android? Or do they do an embrace and extend so that they can say, "Hey, we're uh, Android compliant." Um, you know, the old Microsoft would do something like that. I, I don't know that, that Microsoft understands that anymore, or or even thinks about it. I, you know, um, you know, I, I, uh, you know, Bill Gates is still really in, in charge of the company, and, and does he talk about mobile computers and wearables? No, he's out saving the world from uh, polio, which is a great thing, but you need somebody really mobile focused and I, uh, if you're gonna, you know, um, figure this stuff out. Otherwise, it's just gonna be an enterprise company. It's gonna be like IBM. Okay, great. It's not my problem. 
Okay, John Toshek. Uh, I'm I'm mostly interested. Uh, I'm not that interested in the Apple thing because I think we covered it so well uh, for my closing remarks. Um, but I'm really interested in this the Amazon customer service model and what they're going to do. I think um, you know clearly they're taking a page from Zappos or something like that on on uh, how customer service engages with a you know a buyer or somebody you know one of their customers and um, I think it's kind of a a little strangely articulated now where they can take over your um, your Kindle you know directly in front, through remote control and then have a conversation around it just to show you things I think that's some you know in a in a way that's not that scalable um, but um, and so it's really cost heavy and it's not that much of a differentiator to people who are into into technology. So I'm fascinated to see what how this plays out. You know, you could have said the same thing about shoes before, but Zappos clearly made a difference there through just great customer service. But I think this is going to be a a, a trend that's going to go through the, through uh, the line. Um, I think Apple is way ahead on customer service with just the Genius bars and the the uh, the stores itself. And um, so whether the product is not good or not, if you don't like it, it's just, you know, easy to go. Even Android people, you know, go to an Apple store. I think Google doesn't have any representation like that. And I think that's a, uh, an Achilles heel for the company now, even it, as they grow to, you know, mass quantities of people. Okay. So uh, Keith has disappeared, so uh, I'm going to wrap the show. Uh, I want to thank uh, Rackspace and particularly Rob Jess, without which we wouldn't be here. Uh, well, my mother had something to do with it. Uh, I want to thank uh, New Tech and their TriCaster. Uh, I want to thank uh, our producer and director. What's this? Rackspace. Cool. This is what Robert usually does. What's that? Uh, I want to thank uh, our producer and director, Tina Chase Gilmore. And uh, I want to thank our guests, uh, starting with Kevin Marks. Thanks, Kevin. Um, <laughs> Keith's here. Thank you, Keith. Uh, Robert Scoble, amazing as you always. I just loved the video last week with you know people streaming down the stairs. It looked like World War Z. Or <laughs> it, it's crazy store, man. I you know, anytime I uh, anytime I start saying Apple doesn't have a feature, I'm gonna play that video. <laughs> like, I gotta remind myself sometimes because when you see real people walking into a real story, you get an idea of how loved the brand is and. Uh, um, and that, that was certainly a great example of that. And I want to thank uh, John Toshek. Thanks, Steve. The, the talkative one. Okay. And funny, too. The funny guy from Salesforce. All right. Let's. Uh, this has been fun. Strangely fun. Uh, we'll call it strangely fun. Uh, thanks to everybody in the chat room, as always. Uh, you guys seem to be getting more and more chatty each week. Keith is back so to say goodbye. Let's just bring him in. Okay, Keith, <laughs> goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I don't know what happened. My Skype crashed. Okay. Well, you've heard this all before, so you can, you can, uh, you'll be here next week, right? Um, <laughs> good question. Let me look. Next week is the fourth. Uh, you know, I will not be here next air. week. I Sorry. won't be here next week. Oh, okay. Um, right, I've, well. got, I've got a lunch with Yossi Vardy. <laughs> well, let me do the voice. Keith doesn't realize he's on the air. <laughs> oh, I, I don't. <laughs> Could you inform us of your schedule more, please? <laughs> this is a rare edition of the after show on the show. <laughs> I'm also frozen. Join the club. <laughs> All right. 
Thanks to everybody who showed up and especially those who didn't. We'll see you again next time. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.